Okay, cool. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we wanted to give an update on uh, Octopus Deploy 4.0 uh, as it's approaching feature complete. Cool. Uh, the timeline so far has been May, design was well underway, June, um, development was underway, and the first set of UX tours were given. Um, last month, we gave a presentation about it being N% percent complete, and now we are almost feature complete. Um, this is a screenshot of our Trello board. Um, the Dutton column uh, scrolls quite a bit. Um, and it's just a, a little bit left in comparison to that. Um, we're down to some bit. <laughs> Hopefully it's less than 20%. Um, what is left, uh, this was at the start of yesterday. Uh, some of these things might be more underway. Um, step templates, uh, we're going through all the permissions, uh, some deployment tasks, uh, cloning projects. Um, we're really trying to clean up consistency uh, and add some more polish, polish to uh, the infrastructure dashboard, releases, and the variable editor. Um, we've got a bunch of known bugs, uh, some, of you, some of which you'll see today, and of course the unknown bugs. We're supporting Polish as a language, eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, front end team size, uh, just wanted to get some stats about how it's growing. Um, it'll be about 35 next month, and if the trend continues, it'll be double that in a month. <laughs> so maybe we've got some hiring to do, or maybe we'll just <laughs> start recruiting people. But what that means is we want you um, kicked off a um, bug bash board. Once, once we're feature complete, we'll uh, share this around, um, and so we can do a proper internal beta. Um, but as the team size grows, we'll see charts like this. The orange is the, how much time is spent discussing certain approaches that scales exponentially. Um, all right, uh, just before I go into the UI, I just wanted to do some, uh, just recap on, the, on why we were doing this, some of the user experience objectives, and it boiled down to these three things, looking back at Jess's um, earlier presentations. Uh, reducing cognitive load, uh, modernizing the look and making sure we've got uh, room to grow with new features. Um, wanted to just show some side-by-side -side screenshots where it's easier to sort of highlight these things. Uh, on the left is uh, the V3 portal, on the right is the V4. Um, this is just some examples of trying to reduce the cognitive load about showing you the sort of the, the, the nested steps. Um, this there on the right, making that clearer, sort of less less noise on the screen, and just the, the call to action being clear up the top instead of um, sort of being scattered throughout. And if you had more nested steps, you would see um, add step all over the place. Um, here's another screen, a simpler one, just channels, same, just consistently call to action on the right. Um, same with this one where we see the the releases list, just uh, a, a clearer, more visual highlight of, of, of where something went. Um, yeah, all right, let's jump in. Yep, let's get that. All righty. So, first thing I wanted to cover was um, show the responsive menus. So this is the new infrastructure dashboard. Um, we see the navigation on the left. We switched to a view where we've got uh, less width. Um, the menu has collapsed here, and as we navigate, this way, just like that. Um, if we see that on another screen, here we've got the, the variable editor, and this one's got an example of a nested menu on the left. If we just reduce the width here as well, we see that the menu's collapsed along the top, and we've got the submenus here. Um, let's turn those off. So next thing to show was, um, sort of consistency in search and filters. So we've got our little um, text filtering thing here, uh, inputs. Um, these are, are common throughout the app, over there on the right as well. And if we drill into, what do I want to drill into? Go to environments, 
Um, another thing we've um, done for consistency is the, the filtering approach throughout uh, V4. Um, the show advanced filter is now almost everywhere consistent. Yeah, and Nick, close the dev bar. Ah, yeah, cheers. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, the fil filters on the left, as you, as you um, sort of filter there, get the summary and have this reset action that's common. Um, if we switch to the variable editor, it's the same kind of filter. Um, this can be seen throughout and it's got its own expand and collapse sections as well. Great. Um, the next thing I wanted to show was uh, the primary and secondary actions. So back on the environment, we've got our, our, our primary action here across different screens. Um, then we've got the secondary actions here, and then we've got the overflow actions for any other thing. So this is highly consistent across the app, one place to come and do the actions. So we'll go to the next screen. We'll see on, uh, this is uh, um, editing a user, we've got the save action, we've got their change password there, and any overflow actions there. Um, next thing I wanted to cover for consistency is how we do del um, delete, uh, sorry, how we do warnings and, and, and modals. So if we try to delete this user, we get our, our warning message here. These are, again, consistent across the app with the red delete. Uh, if I jump over to, say, a feed, and I try to delete the feed as well, you'll see it's got the same set of actions there and the same style of uh, warning pop-up. Okay. Now, I um, wanted to show errors next. So if we go over to a, um, a process and we add a step, um, and we just hit save without populating any of the data. We'll see um, the errors come up here. So they'll always push these sections down. Um, this is not fully polished yet in terms of highlighting the sections below. That's what we're aiming to get to. Quick um, tap five. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanted to show was um, tabs. Uh, if we go into a variable set, we've still got these uh, the, the tab mechanism to split out um, related elements. So here in the tenant variables, we've got the variables, the templates, and the settings. Uh, and these are uh, tracked in the, in the URL, so you can deep link back to these and share these. Um, and we've got another example on the, the tenant variables as well. They've got uh, the two tabs in this case. Um, okay, the next type of thing I wanted to cover was uh, callouts. Um, so these are present in the old app and we try to standardize and, and give you the good look and feel for those as well. So uh, this is an example of a callout where it's telling you that there are no templates for this project. Go to the next tab. Uh, and we do a try to add an identity, and we do and we do an action, and then the action results in no data. We get the the, the note style call out here, and then if we have some kind of just general warning or uh, important message to convey, it's uh, the red one there. Um, okay, the next thing I want to cover in terms of consistency was um, the lists. So if we go to the next tab, we've got um, this style of list where it's um, quite a detailed certificate listing. So it's got it, its main title and it's got all of its elements there. Um, so if we go to another style of, this is yet another style of list where it sees, and we've got the overflow menus on the right. And if we bring up pop-ups, we've got uh, a different style of list. Oops, that's a little bit of a bug. Okay, and then uh, one more style of list is, ah, oh, sorry, these were the other kind of call outs I wanted to show. So, so some screens sort of do have this sort of overloaded um, messaging, but it was uh, determined that all this information was, was important. 
Um, and then just lastly, uh, we've got a release that's happened and this is the other style of list where it's uh, nested and with the, um, the icons there. And then just wanted to quickly show just what the, um, the task log looks like in the new portal, which we didn't have up and running last time. Um, yeah. So I think that's all I wanted to cover. Um, any questions on that? Everybody's on the team, so. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's seen a lot of this. So compared to the last walkthrough where I, I showed as much of the UI as possible, this was just to show some of the, the more consistent approaches uh, in some of the other newer screens. If we're just mucking around and then we find a, an issue, what's the best approach to? Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if you can't fix it, uh, give clear repro steps on one of the columns in the thing. But I think maybe, maybe we start raising them in the bug bash board now or not yet. At the, at the moment, just add it to the to-do list. Yeah. But yeah. literally, if it's a simple thing, just and you're in the code, yeah. just fix it, that's, that's the easiest way. Yeah, sometimes taking a screenshot, doing it, takes longer than just opening it up. Like, especially if you could do it from the GitHub UI. Like, uh, I guess I, I, changed, I changed the call out. I had a call out that was the wrong kind. We need to edit this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it, it, <laughs> it's React. It's getting compiled. Do a branch if, you build, if it builds, it's, it's good. <laughs>